my name is Wilson Riles and Pat and I will be uh, in seeing the beginning of this program and we want to start with some words from someone who knows quite a bit about what's going on here at Livermore Labs. Um, I want to uh, bring him forward because he is doing what the mayor of Hiroshima asks us all to do. He is bringing forth the fact that Hiroshima asks everyone throughout the world to accept this wish of the Habakusha and walk with them the path to nuclear weapons abolition and world peace. And that is Scott Young. Scott will detail uh, weapons activities currently underway here at Livermore Labs. Scott is a staff attorney at Livermore based with Tri-Valley uh, Tri Cares. He manages the group's environmental and right to know litigation and is preparing an amicus brief in support of the Marshall Islands federal case. Uh, Yunt facilitates a support group of Livermore Lab and other workers made ill uh, on the job uh, here at Livermore. Thank you, good morning, everybody. So good to see all your beautiful faces here. So as we gather today outside this fence on this somber memorial to stand in solidarity with thousands of other people in the world who are doing the same thing, to remember the victims of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, I think we also are standing to remember other Habaksha, other victims of nuclear weapons and atomic weapons, including those in the Marshall Islands downwinders of the Nevada test site and other test sites around the world, and the thousands of nuclear weapons workers, including some from right here, who have been made ill by on-the-job exposure. For them, we say no more nukes and never again. But as we stand here to outside these gates, 5,000 people are showing up for work, driving by us, partly why we have it right on this corner so they'll see us. And they're going in there, some of them to maintain these tools of mass destruction. Others are developing an entirely new generation of nuclear weapons. And every year, right behind this fence, they manage to spend a billion dollars on these pursuits. And this is just a portion of the overall funds that are devoted to this work in our country on these nuclear nightmares. The complex of which New Livermore Lab is a part of actually is spending $2 million every hour of every day on nuclear weapons. And if the weaponeers get their way, who are in control of this right now, by 2030 they'll be spending twice that much, $4 million an hour on nuclear weapons. And the plan is not just to refurbish the weapons in the stockpile, but we're also building a whole new generation of submarines to deliver those weapons, a whole new generation of bombers to deliver those weapons, and a whole new generation of intercontinental ballistic missiles to deliver those weapons. Some of these things that we're building aren't going to even be ready for 20 years or more. And adjusted for inflation, we're spending more now than we did at the height of the Cold War on these weapons. And that's supposedly been over the Cold War for 23 years. So there's a saying, put your money where your mouth is. Well, according to our money, our country's mouth is saying, we commit our children and to another generation of excessive nuclear arsenals and the horrors they represent. And I mention money because people often ask me, why are we still, still developing these weapons of mass destruction? And while politics is part of it, I think we really need to follow the money. For example, Sandia National Lab, which has a California site right here next to Livermore Lab, uh, has a magazine. And you know, Sandia is, uh, is uh, managed by Lockheed Martin Corporation. 
And in their magazine, they recently touted how they sent their staff to Washington, D.C. to, quote, help decision makers prioritize a new weapon called the long-range nuclear cruise missile, long-range standoff nuclear cruise missile. And they're going to massively profit from this weapon if they build it, yet they're in Washington persuading our, our own leaders to help them do that. Livermore Lab will also do studies on this and heavily, heavily profit from it. So as executives and stockholders at Lockheed and Livermore's management consortium, which includes Bechtel, Babcock and Wilcox Corporation and Battelle Corporation, <coughs> are profiting from this, we're all suffering. Uh, Livermore Lab is also continuing to request funding to do plutonium experiments in their biggest single program, the National Ignition Facility. So far we've spent $8 billion on that boondoggle and we've gotten very little to show for it. Um, but we're proud to say that thanks to the advocacy from Tri-Valley Cares this year in Washington, there is no funding going to plutonium experiments in the NIF. And I will say that our Senator, Dianne Feinstein, who we worked really hard w on that with, um, w was a stalwart on it and is making sure that hard questions get asked. But the impacts of this escalating investment into our nuclear weapons won't just be felt by the wallets of every American <clears throat> or the wallets of people in all the other countries that are modernizing to keep their stockpiles up with ours. The impacts will be felt in the form of more accidents, more spills, and more leaks at nuclear weapons facilities and the communities that house them. It'll also be felt by the environment that continues to be shortchanged in so many ways, including the cleanup of the very mess the development of these weapons has caused. The contaminated groundwater at Livermore currently is not scheduled to be totally cleaned up for 70 more years. It could really use more funding. We advocate for that, but they'd rather spend that money on weapons. Workers are also going to be impacted. I facilitate a support group for sick workers at Livermore Lab. Many of them have aggressive cancers, mysterious skin ailments, lung conditions like beryllium disease and asbestosis, all from working on these weapons. I have several clients actually who are now homeless because of the medical expenses that they've had to incur. Nationally, over 100,000 former workers have filed claims for compensation and benefits due to their illnesses. From 2,500 from Livermore and Sandia right here. And these people were told their jobs were safe. And they were often also told to cover up the accidents, spills, and exposures that they were receiving on the job. And this kind of secret atmosphere persists at the lab. And this week, something really interesting came to light. A Los Alamos employee who is a non-proliferation specialist named, named James Doyle was fired. And he was fired because he wrote a piece in an international journal called Why Eliminate Nuclear Weapons. That did not make the management at Los Alamos happy. Um, I'll, I can let you know it's a journal out of London. And I forget the name. Um, but his article talked about the myth of deterrence and the need for nuclear disarmament. And despite its basic reiteration of President Obama's own policies, uh, he believes that his sudden firing following the article was due to a National Nuclear Security Administration's headquarters-inspired campaign of retribution for his refusal to stay on message and support the lab's central mission, namely nuclear weapons development. And after he was fired, top lab and energy department officials responded to his case by urging that all writings by their employees on topics related to their work be subject to pre-publication review, even when written on their own time. This kind of censorship of our federal employees is not only dangerous, but in the immortal words of John Oliver, who spoke on his show last week about the dangers of enormous nuclear arsenals, it's weapons grade bullshit. A couple of miles down the road in Livermore, every day in a small office, Mary Leah and I go to work to try to speak truth to the power wielded to, in this community from behind this fence and to increase the transparency of this super secret weapons lab. To organize the peaceful together to show there is no consensus here in Livermore or anywhere for that matter for these weapons and to ensure that env the environment in this community is protected and is cleaned up to the highest standard of the law. 
<clears throat> it's an honor and a privilege to work for Tri-Valley Cares, and we're blessed with a venerable executive director, Mary Leah Kelly, who is on the committee that put this event together. So let's give her a quick hand. We also have an awesome board of directors and super duper interns this year who are all here. And uh, we have a table that you guys can check out if you don't know about Tri-Valley Cares. Um, I also just wanted to give a huge thanks to all the groups that organized this event this year. And uh, thank you for letting me share my thoughts and showing up here today to say never again. So thanks everybody and peace. Ooh.